Let's talk about the hedge fund industry a bit. Been a bit of a challenge there. We've seen some high profile funds either have to fold or turn into family offices. Sloan Robertson uh, today, just the latest to announce closure after 25 years. So when you have an event driven moment like this, how does the hedge fund industry survive and how does it thrive? Joining us with his insight, Fabio Salvadelli, a junk professor at the Columbia Graduate School of Business. And let's start there. I mean, these are these are the rock stars, the rock stars of the investment community. How do they survive in times like these and how do they thrive? Well, you know, there's we really got two things, rock stars and uh and, and, you know, when we see these large numbers, I think it's going to be much more the younger uh, startups. If there are rock stars quitting, these rock stars are a heck of a lot closer to uh, uh, Keith Richards and uh, Mick Jagger in age than they are to a, a, young, uh, a young startup. Uh, when we look at the people that quit, you know, it's Sloan Robinson. Uh, the partners are in their 60s at this point. It was founded by Hugh Sloan and George uh, Robinson you know, in 1994, and they've been doing Asian and emerging markets for, you know, for, for, for what is really a, a lifetime, uh, particularly in the hedge fund space. You know, you add to that, they were down around 12 percent uh, between January and June of this year. They're down in the main fund, run, still run by Robinson, down around 8 uh, percent. And AUM had dropped from, you know, multiple billions, well over 10 billions, to down somewhere in the order of a billion right now. Everything's in place to sort of do a bit of a Mick Jagger and, uh, and uh, you know, just hang up, hang up your boots and get your satisfaction elsewhere. John Paulson turned 65 this year. Uh, he, he had uh, less than $9 billion this year. You know, heck, he made $20 billion in profits for his clients in 07, 08. Uh, he took home, as you know, $4 billion famously for himself. And then you know, he hit on gold, and uh, they became one of the largest hedge funds in the world. And he's now down to running his own his own dough. And of course, lands down in Europe. Um, uh, you know, was down around 23 percent for the first half of the year. Assets dropped to you know from from 22 billion to less than half of that. So you're seeing funds in Europe. You're seeing funds in uh, the United States, and you're seeing funds you know trading in Asia. All uh, older, older managers, frankly, hanging it up, and uh, I guess that's not a huge shock. Yeah, Fabio, when we take a look, I mean, the latest numbers out today: hedge funds returning 1.4 percent in June. I mean, it's better than a negative showing, but I see some people actually sort of needling them in the press, saying the so-called Robinhood investors doing a better job of, of picking stocks than the hedge funds. Well, you know, a case a case could be made that that you know uh, maybe maybe they should all subscribe to Robinhood. But uh, you know, in reality, I think well, one of the things that's been very interesting is actually how some of the older hands, um, you know, that have been around for a while, people like Brevin Howard, Alan Howard, is you know in his own fund actually up 100 percent. Only about it's it's kind of a shocking number, but only about eh, let's say maybe 50 percent of managers that are out there have over seven years of experience. The vast majority, certainly the majority, weren't even around for the 2008 crisis. So a lot of people, I think, you know, uh, they, they had drawdowns that they've never had before, and they took risk off instead of looking at the market in a relatively cold, sanguine way and saying, with this amount of uh, money coming into the markets, as we see in the form of Fed intervention, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to replay the movie that we've replayed a bunch of times. And I think that what hurts you isn't the drawdown. What hurts you as a manager going forwards actually is the not capturing the bounce back. And that's what's going to cause these guys to really get, um, you know, to really get crushed. Is is the Yes, Fonnie, sorry. Yes, Fabio, is it a question of strategy as well? I mean, macro, obviously, Brevin Howard, a macro fund, and, and this is its year, and we've seen macro do best out of really all the strategies. That's correct. You know, and, you know, macro actually has done decently well, but they're still up only 3.5%, Bonnie, roughly speaking, year to date. And you look at that and you think, boy, oil gave you a God-given opportunity. The currencies have given you a God-given opportunity. You can't say you didn't have enough volatility. Uh, so, you know, I think, again, some of the macro managers uh, really did hit it. Others, I think, got spooked, said, we don't understand what's going on, and I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist, and I'm taking risk off the table. In the so-called olden days, I think you would have seen hedge fund managers 
more aggressively pursuing the opportunity that the volatility gave them. So what happens next, Fabio? Do we see, you know, new hedge funds emerge? And we're obviously seeing a huge amount of credit funds being created and a lot of money going into that because there is the perception that there'll be a lot of distressed situations people will be able to take advantage of. But now that the Fed has stepped in, sort of that mathematics has changed too. Bonnie. Greg, Greg I, think, uh, I think he's lost me. I got you now. I apologize, but uh, you just came back there. Um, in answer to what I heard to be the question was, you know, the the number of funds closing and the strategies that 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 are uh, are returning. Well, specifically, debt and credit strategies, Fabio, because we've seen a lot of money raised there, and the Fed is now in the market. So, where does that money go? Well, that's just it. Is I think that uh, I think that for a lot of them, they would have wanted to see things be even worse than they were. Uh, they did not want to see the Fed step in and take away their opportunity. Uh, so I think that you're going to get a decent amount of it. And what I think you're going to see where the real opportunity may end up going, um, where the real opportunity may end up being is actually in places where they haven't intervened. I think you'll see a lot more people looking at European credit and emerging market debt was something that a, a market contact and I were discussing to say, you know, there, there's... There's no uh, rich uncle to come and buy your buy your debt and bail you out. And uh, there it's going to be much more of an opportunity of the traditional hedge fund style that will allow them to get, you know, to get involved. Certainly we'll see opportunities in the U.S., airlines, travel, all of that stuff. Things that are below triple B and uh, ineligible for hedge fund purchases, I'm sorry, for Fed purchases, uh, are very much in play and going to offer real opportunity for hedge funds. One opportunity I noticed out there in terms of the place where these hedge funds actually made the right bet, uh, dividend futures. It seems that they got hit harder than the broader market, and some of the more nimble funds are, are the ones that took advantage. Is this, again, a uh, start of the, the, the young ones, the more nimble ones, taking advantage of an opportunity like that in the market? You know, you're, I, th I think you're right on the money on that. And I do think that one of the things that you see is... Uh, one of the great risks that they have, or indeed investors have, is you start off with uh, a small amount of money and you can do trades like that. Once you reach 5 billion, 10 billion, you really can't move the needle executing those trades. So there's a balance between a, sort of an optimal size and with the structure of two and 20, it's really tempting to become, you know, and you're a hedge fund manager, you wanna be the biggest guy in the block. And closing the fund takes a lot of guts so that you can still make money on trades like that. Investors like me would ask and go, how much money did you make on that trade? And then when you see that the fund is $3 billion and he did that, you know, four years ago, hypothetically, it doesn't do you much good for your long-term track record if you're doing things that you can't do uh, going forwards.